Okay, so we're getting ready to build a wing here. This is a clipped wing. Of course, we have in the blueprints clipped wing and standard wing. So make sure you're using the correct drawing for whichever wing you're building. Now this table, okay, is made out of MDF and two by fours. It's 38 inches tall. It's four feet wide. Um, well, actually it's 49 inches wide. And then it's 14 feet long. This table, even though we're doing a clipped wing now, is plenty long enough for both wings, um, both styles of wings. Now, keep in mind when you build a wing, it's 54 inches. Okay, so you are going to have a little bit of the wing hanging off the table. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. 14 feet, um, you could make a 16 foot table just to utilize the MDF sheets a little more efficiently. However, 14 feet is long enough for anything you're going to need to do. And it's um, including the fuselage. So um, don't really worry about going more than 14 feet unless you really, really want to. Now, in the last video, we talked about the stabilizers. We gave a, a brief overview on the stabilizers and um, how they're laid out and, and blocked and how that's actually the more difficult part of, the, of this STL project. The wing, even though it's bigger and um, surprisingly not as complex as the stabilizers, all you really need to do is draw out your ribs, okay, and a single spar. That's it. That's all you need to do for laying out your wing. Make sure that your ribs are um, drawn according to the plans. We have dimensions here, okay, and those tell you where every rib goes. Um, and if you were paying attention, when I very quickly flip pages here, you notice that the clipped wing actually has more ribs in it. We add two extra ribs ahead of the aileron in the clipped wing, and that basically gives us a much tighter... Um, rib spacing for those who want the extra stiffness out of their wing. Um, actually, they're going to need the extra stiffness out of the wing, whether they want it or not, if it's a clipped wing. So um, clipped wings, they have the same wire lengths as the standard wings. And the nice thing about that is if you are uncertain and you haven't ordered your wing kit yet, but you've already started your project and you want to take advantage of our flying wire um, mass orders um, at the end of the year, that's fine. Go ahead and order your wires. You can decide what wing you want later. It'll still fit. Um, so yeah, that's all there is to laying out the wing. So in the next little segment of, of building this wing, we'll uh, go through some of the parts and um, then we'll start building. So we've got the wing laid out on the table. We only drew the ribs and the spar. That's all you need for now. Um, now that we've done that and we've got our workspace kind of cleaned up, it's a good point to start prepping parts for installation later. Now all these parts have a part number on them. Everything we sell does come with an inventory list um, and, and it's pretty thorough, pretty accurate. What you're going to want to do is make sure when you're clipping these out that you don't get rid of those part numbers. All right. Some of these sheets, again, they do need clipped out. We've got these little tabs here. Clip them out, deburr everything just how you have been on your, on your kit so far. Um, a lot of the things that come in the wing kit, of course, aren't this thicker stuff. They're like uh, sheet metal stampings. We've got aileron ribs, we've got aileron tunnels, leading edges, stuff like that. Um, we're not going to go over those right just yet because we don't need to do a whole lot of prep work on those prior to starting the, the actual construction of the wing. Another thing you could prep right now, your wing rib tabs. These are the attachment tabs for the wing ribs. Um, this customer opted for quick builds and then he's and he's taken it a little bit further since then um the quick build what that entails is these are pre-drilled on a, on a jigging fixture you can see one of the holes down here is left out and the reason is because we can click this into our pre-drilled wing spar again all wing spars are now pre-drilled and swing this into place and match drill the bottom so if you don't want to do all these that's fine. You can go ahead and uh, order the quick build option. Um, another thing you can do is you can go ahead and start prepping your uh, drag truss bracketry. Now the STL doesn't use drag and anti-drag wires as used to be common on um, a lot of the ragwing airplanes. We use a drag truss. Um, it's just a, a series of tubes and it's um, so much easier to keep things square on assembly. Um, once you've got them set up, they stay square. You don't need to worry about, um, you know, going in and checking your rigging ever again. So,
go ahead and fabricate these if you want. Now, if you ever have to replace an angle or a piece of, of rectangular tube that we sell you, um, let's pretend you messed something up and you need to buy more. You should probably contact us first. Um, the, the inventory list does tell you that this is a 6061 tube, um, rectangular tube, um, that this is made out of. It tells you uh, what dimensions it, are, it is. But make sure if you ever buy materials on your own that you're not buying something with a sharp radius, okay, or a sharp corner. Um, you can see that these have a radius inside and out on, on the extrusion. And if you go with something that has a sharp edge, it will crack eventually. It's just a matter of time. And speaking of cracks, you can see that this builder has not yet deburred these holes. He hasn't yet deburred his edges. Okay, this looks like he's finished it with 80 grit here, um, which is pretty standard in, in the shop to to um, get close, we use a coarser grit and then of course come back in and deburr it. But he does have to deburr this. That'll crack if he doesn't. So the drag truss, as we were talking a little earlier, this is the drag truss here. And this bracket, of course, is this guy here. Um, this is probably the more complex stuff regarding the wing kit. Uh, you gotta get all this stuff built and lay out all your holes. Once this kind of stuff is done, the wing kit is so easy to build. So easy. You can see here we have a tube insert. Okay, this tube insert goes into, uh, maybe not necessarily this bracket, but once this is on the wing, kind of goes in there like that and bolts in. And this is a telescoping unit right here. This longer tube has this guy on each end. And what that allows us to do is square up the wing on the table extend the length of the tube however we need, and then install the rivets to, to secure everything, um, this tube to the other tube. Um, and now, after you drill it, you might notice that we left this tube a little bit long on the inside, so uh, it, it is acceptable to um, pull this back out. And then, of course, we use, on most of our parts, the formula two times diameter from the center of the hole to the edge. It is okay to trim it back to that point. Um, again, two times diameter from the center of the hole to the edge of the part. That's pretty typical um, unless otherwise noted. So as you can see, very, very simple stuff you could be doing right now to prepare your, your wing kit. This here is a weld mint. We, we're not going to cover weld mints right now. Of course, the wing kit comes with all kinds of high quality weld mints. We'll deal with those a little bit later. Another thing you could do is start prepping your wing ribs for glue. Um, this is a scotch weld adhesive that we use in here. We've also used high saw in the past. We prefer the scotch weld. Um, it's, it's a little more user friendly for what we're doing. And actually I, I like its strength a little bit better, but you can see that this is incredibly strong. Okay. Now, one thing to note about the aluminum, first off, make sure you've pulled all your plastic off the aluminum. Okay. If you try gluing over plastic, you're going to regret that later. It's not meant to adhere to to plastic and it will peel off. Um, so please, please, please make sure you've removed all plastic. Now, when you're doing aluminum, aluminum oxidizes very, very quickly, okay? To the point that if you come in and scuff this as, as called for in the manual, and you scuff this as called for the manual, and you do that to all your wing ribs and then come back to glue them, in that time that you've been prepping your other wing ribs, this has already oxidized a small layer of, of um, corrosion and that layer will peel off eventually off this glue it really hurts the bond okay so the best way to do this and again this is all in the manual the best way to do this prep this part prep this part get them glued together as quickly as possible okay and again make sure that after you're scuffing and this is all in the manual make sure that you're cleaning your parts before you adhere okay and on that same note every manufacturer of an adhesive should have their own mix ratios called out. Okay, if they went to the effort of calling out a mix ratio, there's a very specific reason for that. Don't try and mix your adhesives by eye. Okay, we've had um, customers wanting to do that and we always tell them do not do it because if you're mixing this by eye, there's a very, very real chance you're doing it wrong. Okay, and if you are, this could debond and um, cause some issues down the road. All right, so be very certain that you're following all instructions. It's This is an easy, easy airplane to build, but if you're not paying attention to the instructions, you're going to cause yourself more headaches than, than you want. So, um, 
So yeah, that's a quick overview on just some of the parts that come with the wing kit. Um, again, there's a lot more, but we'll cover those parts uh, as we start digging into the wing itself.